So I was scrolling through TikTok the other day and I saw this video and a woman said, oh, what's my number one reason for not wanting children? Let me just show you. And she cuts to her notes app and there's this list of like 400 things. And she starts scrolling. She's like, nope, we're almost there, we're almost there. And she's like scrolling through all of these numbers, uh, getting all the way to number one. And this isn't a video about wanting kids or not wanting kids, but it inspired me. And as someone who makes content about the stock market and investing, I said, oh, I should make one of these for why I invest. Um, and I'm not gonna come up with a list of like 400 things. Nobody's got time for that. So I went on to chat GPT and I said, you know, give me a list, 300 reasons to invest. And it pops out this list and I'm gonna make, I haven't made it yet, but I'm gonna make a video, just like a funny video on like all the reasons to invest. But then it got me thinking, why do I invest? And why should you? So that's gonna be the topic of this video. My name is Kenneth, by the way, and if you're new here, I teach my almost 500,000 social media followers how to trade, invest, and simplify their lives. So we're talking about stock trading, day trading, and swing trading, investing in the stock market, and most importantly, living below your means, minimalism. My girlfriend and I don't want kids. Um, so the reason I invest is similar probably to a lot of other people, but also kind of different in that most people who are investing want financial freedom. They want to stop working. They want to retire earlier. They want to spend their money on things they love and their passions. They also want to create generational wealth for their kids. So if that's you, great, keep watching because investing is, is universal and it's for everybody. Um, and if you don't want kids, keep watching because there are still things that need to be discussed, uh, maybe in a different video, but what to do with your money as you approach end of life. Maybe you have nieces and nephews, maybe your best friends have kids, maybe you're a godparent, maybe you want to set up charitable trusts, um, or, or uh, you know, student, you know, college accounts for your friends, kids, or your nieces, nephews, whatever. But the reason that I invest is for financial freedom. I think that's the number one reason for most people. When I was 18, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. I went up to a school. I was fortunate enough that my mom was really cool with it. And I got thrown over the top rope on day one, <clears throat> hit the cement, and I broke my back. And I was like, well, now what am I gonna do? Of course, option one is, well, you just go to college. But I didn't wanna go just to go. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my interests were. I had tunnel vision from, from when I was a little kid. All I wanted was to be a pro wrestler. So I worked odd jobs in the restaurant industry as a server and a waiter and an expediter and a line cook and um, loved it. But then it was time to move on and I didn't know where to go after that. I wrote a couple books as well. One got an LA Times review, which was pretty cool. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't like, I'm gonna be an author, you know? And I had like all these little side projects and these little side hustles because I'm pretty creative, but nothing ever went anywhere and nothing really ever took off. And my music just randomly started playing on my computer. That was weird. And I ended up working in the fitness industry, front desk, you know, like scanning people in, have a good workout, have a good workout. Uh, and that was fine, but that felt like that job was going either nowhere or it was going somewhere that I didn't want, like membership sales or management, which just didn't appeal to me. And around that same time, I was really, I had always been interested in the stock market, but I really started to get into day trading and swing trading. I was losing a lot of money, um, but I learned and I taught myself and I've been doing that for 14 years, but really truly at the, at the, at the base of it all, the reason that I invest is twofold. One, so I can enjoy life now. That's really where most of the trading comes from. And two, uh, so I can have a much more secure future. If you've ever visited an old person in a, in a facility or nursing home, it's bleak. That shit is scary. Um, and those facilities are expensive. The cheap ones are expensive. So I wanna make sure, especially because we're not having kids, um, not that you should have kids for the purpose of them to take care of you. That feels selfish to me. Um, but there isn't gonna be anyone to take care of me. So I'm gonna need to put myself somewhere if, if it should get to that uh, point. 
and I want to make sure that I have enough money to go somewhere that's enjoyable and comfortable. Um, I like being alive. I know a lot of younger people are like, just die when you start to have some trouble, but I don't want to just die. I want to be around for a while and enjoy my life and have a high quality of life. I don't want to be eating like iceberg lettuce with like a squirt of shitty Caesar dressing and some like microwave chicken nuggets that they serve at some like, you know, very expensive, but like low end facilities. That doesn't appeal. That feels very sad to me. I invest for my future. I invest for now as well. I have two brokerage accounts. I have a Roth IRA for retirement and I have an individual account for now. I also have the individual account because when I was trading stocks, I couldn't open a Roth IRA uh, because you need earned income and the IRS deems money that I make from stock trading as unearned income. In other words, it's like, it's not real. It wasn't coming from like a job. Um, but I don't invest to, to splurge and to buy things. When you get that investor mentality versus the consumer mentality, uh, it really switches for you. And you go from you know looking at a pair of shoes at a store going like, oh, these are nice, but they're $150. I could put that into the stock market instead. And you're not depriving yourself, right? Minimalism has this bad, like this bad, connotation of like you're you're making yourself miserable on purpose and you're punishing yourself and you're depriving yourself but for me it's the opposite I get into like you know how people are like this is my Furby collection or this is my Stanley mug collection or my shoe collection and you're like why like why do you have this I'm the same way for investments so anytime I get paid it goes right into my investment portfolio I'm building something here I'm building a portfolio that's going to take care of me not only when I'm 59 and a half, but, but now as well. So if there's an emergency, I can sell some shares. I'm covered. I'm good. I'm okay. It would be a last resort for me, but I could do it if I had to. I encourage everyone to start investing. It's a lot easier than you think. You know, the way that I go about it is I invest in what I know, use, and love. That's the beginning for me. And it was even earlier before I knew anything about fundamentals and and looking at earnings and balance sheets. Before I knew any of that stuff, it was investing in companies that I knew and used and loved. So as a little kid, I loved McDonald's. My mom tipped me off to the stock market when I was like eight. She was like, you know, if you love McDonald's so much, why don't you invest? And I was like, I can own this. Um, so we called her stockbroker because it was the 90s and I got some McDonald's stock. After that, there was a long period of where, I mean, the internet didn't really even exist at that point. Um, and, and then WWE, I'm a pro wrestling fan, WWF at the time went public in 1999. And there was no way I wasn't going to be a shareholder. Day one, IPO day, give me those shares. And then again, a long period of me not really getting into stocks or anything like that. Until I graduated high school and my mom got me an Apple laptop as a graduation gift. And it was like life changing. And all my friends at graduation, like aunts and uncles and neighbors were coming up and handing them, oh, here's an iTunes gift card. Like that's what the kids like. Here's an iTunes gift card. And my friends were all excited and all my friends had iPods and I had this new computer and I was like, Apple, hmm. Invest in what you know, use and love. I'll show you something really quickly. I knew enough about the stock market in 2008 to make this wish list, which I'm sure some of you have seen. And I didn't buy all the stocks on this list because it was my first recession and I was really scared. And you know, you talk to the professionals and, and some of them give you bad advice and they're like, oh, it's, it's really, you know. So I had this list and I had a lot of money because remember I was working double shifts in the restaurant industry. I was living at home, which I don't think I mentioned, but I was living at home. So all the money I was making was going into a savings account, not the stock market, big mistake, but I didn't have anything like this to help me back then. So I wrote down this list of some companies here. I'll hold it up so you can, you can kind of see them a little bit, but one of them right down here is Chipotle. $38 a share, $38 a share for Chipotle. Uh, it ended up going up over $3,000 per share. I, I put Chipotle on this list because I, I knew it, I used it and I loved it and I didn't invest in it, which was a huge mistake because back then, especially because of my grandma, I was told you buy and you hold, um, which is why I held Apple, which is why I held WWE, which is why for a very long time, 
uh, in my custodial account that my mom ran for me, we held that McDonald's. Unfortunately, don't have it anymore, but uh, you know, I was told you buy and you hold. So I would have held those Chipotle shares and that would have been a huge gain for me. I was also at the time usually buying around 300 shares per company. So I likely would have purchased 300 shares. You can do the math from 38 to 3,000 uh, on 300 shares would have been quite the game. But I didn't buy it. Going forward though, I started investing in what I knew, used, and loved. That was, that was my starting point for everything. I started thinking about it. Instead of, you know, you hear people say, oh, I wish I could invest, I just don't know what to invest in. I don't know what to invest in. Yes, you do. If you want a latte, where do you go? If you want a Big Mac, where do you go? If you want to stream a television show, where do you go? If you want to order a product on the internet and have it delivered the next day, where do you go? You know these companies. So people will always say, oh, individual stocks, individual stocks, it's so risky. And it can be if you don't know what you're doing. I get DMs from people all the time saying I bought stock in these 15 companies and they list them out and they're all penny stocks. And I'm like, well, why did you buy those? And they're like, well, some guy on TikTok mentioned this one and some person on Instagram mentioned that one. And I saw this article online that mentioned this one. Come on, man. Have you heard of these companies? Have you used these companies? No, no, no. The best place to start is with companies you already know, use, and love. I own stock in Netflix because I, I use it. I own stock in Kava because I eat there. I own stock in Chipotle now because I eat there. I own stock in Amazon because I use Amazon. I own stock in Apple because I use Apple. Uh, I, I own stock in TKO, which is UFC and WWE because I watch their product. I go to their shows when they come to town. So, you know, I, I use Meta because... Um, or I invest in Meta because I use Meta. I use Instagram, I use Facebook. Maybe less Facebook these days because it's just cat and puppy and baby photos. I don't wanna see that shit. Um, anyway, enough of this video, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'll put some images on the screen of some investments that I like and um, some things for new investors to consider as well because ETFs, index funds, tend to be better for new investors who are a little bit less experienced and don't know what to buy or when to buy or how much or whatever, and they get nervous. So I always recommend starting off easy. Foundation, one S&P, one tech, one dividend fund. That's a good foundation, broad diversity, gives you exposure to everything, broad market, tech, dividends. And then from there, you can build out if you so choose. And if you, if you choose not to, that's okay too. But you gotta find your why. Why are you investing? For us, it's because we like travel, it's because we like to eat out and try new restaurants, and we want passive income so we can retire earlier and start enjoying our life more. For you, it might be generational income. For someone else, it might be something different. So find your reason, start as soon as you can. Someone always asks me like, oh, dollar cost versus lump sum. Look, there might be times when the markets go down and it presents a buying opportunity, but Lump sum is always gonna be better when you have a 30 year approach or a 30 year timeline because you're starting with the most, the earliest, which means you make the most from dividends, from the stock going up over time. Dollar cost averaging is great if it's all you can afford, but you're building very slowly. Two shares a month, five shares a month. It's gonna take you years to build up any sort of long-term portfolio, which is still great. I'm gonna run a, a little picture here um, to show you what it looks like when you dollar cost to average into an S&P 500 index fund versus when you lump sum that same amount just all at once versus spread out over a 30 year period. All right, it's almost 15 minutes of your life that you're not gonna get back. Well, hopefully you get something from this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, follow, and thanks for watching, have a good day.